Adam Audio is probably most well known for changing the recording landscape with their ribbon tweeters. Most don't know that Adam Audio tweeters are not in fact true ribbon tweeters. The original ribbon tweeters date back to the early 60s and while they were loved for their sensitivity, they had issues with dispersion. Here is an approximation of a true ribbon tweeter. The material is usually stamped aluminum, suspended in a magnetic field. They sound great if you are exactly on axis. Moving just a few degrees off axis would cause the high frequencies to drop off dramatically, which is obviously a no-go for any sort of studio monitoring. In the early 70s, a German electrical engineer slash inventor named Oscar Heil refined the ribbon tweeter into what he named air motion transformer. And that is the basis of what we have been refining for the last 20 years in our ART, Accelerated Ribbon Technology Tweeter. The aluminum was replaced by Kapton, a polyamide film prized for its ability to remain stable in a wide range of temperatures. Kapton has been used for both a sun shield and thermal insulation in spacecraft. Its ability to dissipate heat and its lightweight make it more efficient. Folding it evened out the frequency response, and putting it in a horizontal orientation not only fixed the dispersion problem, but made it ideal for studio monitoring. First, the surface area is more than five times the surface area of a standard one-inch dome tweeter. Put most simply, it provides a lot more mid to high information and the following advantages. The range of human hearing goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz at best. An extension to 50 kilohertz allows a much more natural extension of air. Due to the way the AMT functions physically, the transfer rate is four to one. As in the air it pulls in is projected out four times faster. An excellent dome tweeter can at best represent one to one. The material is so much more lightweight than the piston of the dome tweeter that it reacts exponentially faster. I don't like speakers that are sluggish, uh, mostly because I just feel I can't hear compression properly. Uh, and with the S3Hs, I just couldn't believe how fast they were for their size. Usually, as you get larger in speakers, they get slower. That's just kind of how things make sense. Uh, these things, you can literally hear every transient that, that you're working on, which obviously translates to you know, specific things. It's easier for me to hear you know, hi-hat bleed in the snare mic or the reverb tail on a vocal or being able to hear the bleed of the track from the headphones or from the speakers in the vocal microphone when you're listening to everything else uh, is, is hard to do on a speaker and it's something that was like one of the first things I noticed. All of the above results in far less distortion than traditional tweeters. That results in not only more accurate monitoring, but our most common compliment is the lack of ear fatigue. The top end does not hurt your ears, which is really good for long days of tracking. You got monitors cranked up, a lot of guitarists want to track with monitors full blast. They don't want to be in headphones. I get that. It means I'm sitting here right in the splash zone all day. And with the, with the S3Vs, I can do that. My, you know, I, my ears aren't ringing at the end of the day. I can crank them up, but there's a softness because of the ribbon tweeter. There's just a softness up top that, um, I mean, I can get through a 10-hour day tracking and feel pretty good at the end of it. And I love with the ribbon tweeter that they have, Adam speakers in general, I just love how it doesn't seem to hurt my ear. You just don't, you know, you don't, I sit in front of these all day and mess with different sounds and, and singing stuff and, you know, whatever. And I leave, you know, 5 p.m. or whatever it is after a session and, and my ears aren't hurting, you know, and that's huge because I can go, I, I actually get in the car and listen to some more music. <laughs> You know, so uh, they, don't, they don't tire your ears out. This animation will display the fundamental differences in dispersion between the piston dome tweeter and our ART. The dome tweeter projects out in all directions, which can cause comb filtering at the mixed position. You can see the vertical dispersion of our ART eliminates the bounce. Measuring the distance from the tweeter to the desk in the setup, then back to the ear walls of the engineer, we can then do the math on the delay of that signal. High pass it, then mix it in with the direct sound and demonstrate the haze of comb filtering. April spring brings hope again. Let us be night understand. Have you missed that love of
everything you got is gold Universe in bloom Meet me in the garden I plant it for you We get some common responses to this experience. I felt like someone was putting on the glasses to my ears. <laughs> it's like someone kind of took like a layer of like fog off my glasses because I do wear glasses when I'm, <laughs> when I'm, when I'm working. And um, it's like uh, off off my ear glasses. There's a, there's a layer of fog that is now gone. And I listened to the song on the S3H the first time. It was really like that before it was overcast and suddenly like the sky lifted up and you can see the stars and everything, you know? Like it really has this open feeling. The width and even depth of our stereo field is also a common response to working on monitors. It's wider, it's deeper. Uh, like the depth, you just like see, like I'm seeing the drums back there and I'm seeing the whole like space that the drums are in, like the room. Like I'm hearing things to the side that I didn't, I didn't remember. I'm actually panning reverb tails now with automation because you hear the tail. <laughs> well, why doesn't it go hey, like that? There's all these cool things that you can do because you can hear. It changes the way I pan. Uh, I can hear something just go right across the stereo image. There's no jump into the middle. Or what I've, I've always struggled with this is great center spot, great left, great, great left and right. Everything in between is kind of this gray area. Is that 40% out? Is it 65% out? I don't know. It's kind of out there somewhere in the middle. With these guys, I can just li I can listen to something just like minutely. I'm in Pro Tools. I go from 25 to 30, and I just hear it. It's like right there. Uh, and I haven't had that on any of the other studio monitors I've worked on. It is not a ribbon tweeter. It goes up to 50 kilohertz. A 4 to 1 advantage in efficiency and dynamic range offer even more than the best dome tweeters. Due to the lightweight material and physical function, it is exponentially faster than dome tweeters. And due to the same factors, there is far less distortion for a dramatic reduction in ear fatigue. That lack of distortion and the huge dispersion advantage results in an incredibly defined stereo image. The same engineering principles and techniques are used in our entry-level T5V that are used in our highest-end S2V and every monitor in between, and these are still handmade in Berlin, like they have since 1999.